It's March 21st, 1998. The first day of spring and four men are having lunch in a restaurant. A waiter serves one of them some cranberry juice. Chosen for dessert. This man, immediately after the first sip, suddenly gets up as if he's gone crazy. He holds his hands around his neck. He loses his breath, runs out into the parking lot, collapses to the ground and pronounces his last words. They poisoned me. Steve Robinette, the lead detective on the case, collected the testimonies of everyone in the parking lot, including the final disturbing words of a man immediately identified as Stanley Meyer. A citizen of Grove County, his brother Stephen was one of the four at the table, and he heard the words spoken at the end of his life. Robinette is not one for interminable investigations. He performed a toxicology analysis, which gave no significant results, and he also spoke to the coroner, who attributed his death to a brain aneurysm, compatible with previous episodes of hypertension. In just three months, he closed the case file, sealed it with a colored elastic band, and wrote on the cover, Death by Natural Causes. Formally, the case was now resolved. In 2015, Robinet retired from the police force and devoted himself to politics. Why? Becoming president of the city council. All right. And in 2019, he also ran for mayor. But we can all rest assured that in all these years, he never forgot the case of Stanley Meyer. The inventor of the water-powered car. water-powered car, who, in 1998, got up from a table at a restaurant to run into a car park, some say just to leave us a message. They poisoned me, and it's because of what I'm doing to revolutionize the car world. The coroner's report contained the following statement. No poison known to American science has been found. American science? Was there different sciences based on countries? Huh. Wouldn't just wouldn't science just be science? It's just like those people that say I'm expressing my truth. <laughs> there's no different kinds of truths. There's not your truth, there's not my truth, there's just the truth, right? So when they say American science, is there a Canadian science? Is there a Mexican science? Is there uh, an English science? I don't know. Uh, so we have to go back to 1975 when Meyer, who spent his life patenting technical solutions of every kind, from the banking sector to, ironically, heart monitoring, decided to explore the automotive world. In that year, the effects of the Middle East oil embargo, which had also led to a crisis in the United States, were still considerable. With a significant drop in car sales, Meyer thought that the way to get out of oil dependency was through water propulsion. A very alternative solution indeed, it goes without saying. He created a fuel cell based on the principle of splitting water atoms into its elemental form. Burning hydrogen, hydrogen to create energy and releasing oxygen. Along with water residues through the exhaust pipe, thus generating harmless emissions. After a few months, he managed to develop his water-powered engine, mounting it onto a dune buggy painted with the conspicuous writing, water-powered car, as you can see right there. Right, no, oh, right here, right there. Um, and with a call to his Christian faith to communicate the spirit of protection and creation which animated his actions. Meyer claimed his vehicle was able to travel 180 kilometers with just four liters of water. Four liters of water. And nothing else. 
45 kilometers with just a liter of something that costs hardly anything must have sounded truly magical. And that's exactly when his trouble started, obviously. You can't... I mean, I get where the guy's heart was and his, his brain, right? But when you push back on an industry that makes, what, trillions of dollars, billions, trillions of dollars every year, especially in the car industry and especially in gasoline and, you know, if you're going to take the, the, the oil company out, I mean, just think of the Middle East is run powered not on nothing but the oil business. I mean, the richest people or group in the world that we know of are is the house of Saad, right the house of Saad is worth what 101.7 trillion dollars like i think that was like last year's count and that's that was all i'm pretty sure the majority of it based on on the oil business i mean you're gonna try to take the oil business away people that have made millions and billions of dollars on oil and you're just going to switch everything up that makes that money like overnight. Nah, that's not going to happen. I get where he was coming from. I get where his heart was. But you're unfortunately going up against forces that do not want to lose that money. Because you imagine overnight, all of a sudden we have a water powered car and overnight they lose everything, money, businesses. Contracts, deals, all kinds of things is just gone overnight because of a water-powered car. It's easier to get to get rid of one guy than to change what you've been doing for hundreds of years. So he was definitely wrong place with a great idea. Taking a look at what's left of this inexplicable series of events. There's a film of this moving car and various photos of the car surrounded by admiring people, but many argue that no one had ever really verified the actual operation of the engine. Whether it was powered purely by water and whether the patent or the project worked at all. Analyzing the case, there have been rivers of words and ink spent over the years both to support and to refute Meyer's thesis and especially the veracity of what he claimed. Even an American judicial authority in 1996, two years before his mysterious death, had looked into Meyer's invention, petitioned by several small investors who had financed the development of his project, who later became suspicious and worried that it was doomed to bankruptcy. Eh. Fayette County Judge of Ohio had appointed three surveyors to whom Meyer refused to submit the car and who concluded by noting that the chemical and technological process invented by Meyer, in quotes, would not be at all revolutionary, even going so far as to call it trivial, and that no evidence was provided that it could actually effectively power an automobile engine. The judge then issued his verdict in which he decreed that the funds received by Meyer had been stolen by deception, damn, gross and egregious fraud, and he was sentenced to return it to investors. For a man whose livelihood depended on his ingenuity, this was certainly not a small financial pill to swallow and, perhaps worse still, honor. Certainly, this was a very sad epilogue for someone who had proclaimed themselves to be the savior of the complex equation between efficient automotive propulsion, respect for the environment, and affordable power. Stanley had previously stated that he had been threatened many times by representatives from oil companies, there you go, from around the world, <laughs> including tales of car chases with armed guards. Wow. I mean, it's like I told you, it's easier to get rid of one guy and his vehicle than for them to completely rework what they've been doing for hundreds of years and get into a new business and everything. They're making billions of dollars off of the oil, the oil companies, the oil business, right? It's ridiculous. He also claimed he had been offered the hyperbolic sum of a million dollars, some even say a billion, 
to kill all evidence of his technology that he had refused. The scientists who tried to get in touch with Meyer to learn more about his project declared that Stanley had a paranoid, I should I would too, attitude, and that he had flatly refused to subject the dune buggy to a test in order to verify its performance. Even if they promised not to open the black box containing the electronic components that powered the system. Black box. You know what, that's kind of like that black box that... I forgot what that man's name where he, he built that entire... Um, giant structure like park in florida somewhere where it's just all made of like giant stones that he apparently just lifted by himself and moved them around and such and he positioned them in ways where they can be moved without and these are like giant stones that weigh tons and tons right and you can just like press them push them over just with like your finger um i forgot the guy's name but he had a black box as well we have to get that'll definitely be another video we can do that uh, containing the electronic components that powered the system. We know just how many car manufacturers have faced the delicate problem of hydrogen propulsion. Water still lies at the heart of the process, but with far greater design and construction complexities, Stanley and his brother Stephen, despite their defeat, tried to protect what they continue to declare as the invention of the century. Oh, yeah, it would be shit. Stephen Meyer claimed that one week after Stanley's death, Unidentified people had stolen the dune buggy from Stanley's garage. Not surprised. Along with all of the inventor's instruments and that the vehicle had subsequently been found. But it is unclear under what circumstances and conditions. They probably stripped the shit out of it too. The patent had been registered and the dune buggy was later closed off in a room without doors. So that no one could steal it and destroy it. But according to Myers detractors, so that no one could examine it and discover the weakness of the patent. It seems that in 2014, and therefore some 16 years after the death of Stanley, the vehicle turned up in Canada, perhaps sold by his brother, now under ownership of the Holbrook family, claimed to be old associates of Stanley. But nothing is known of it after that date. We cannot therefore exclude the possibility of new chapters being added to this thriller in which reality, reticence, and supposition alternate continuously, firmly keeping the suspicion of Myers' supporters alive, who still doubt against all investigative evidence the purity of that cranberry juice. Yeah, I mean, it's just like I was saying, you, <laughs> you're messing with a lot of people's money. You're messing with institutions that have been around for hundreds of years and it's just the way business has gone. The oil industry is too big to, to fail at this point. It's like banks and everything else. They, they, you know, like I said, they'd rather, if he was indeed killed, but they'd rather get rid of just one person to keep everything chugging along as, as it has been for, you know, for all these years. So if he actually did get something created where it would use water just to go, you know, to, to power the engine and such, like you said, four liters of water to go 180 kilometers, that's ridiculous. That would be, that would have been an amazing invention. You know, obviously it would have made him a lot of money if he had gotten, he had a patent, but if he had gotten it out on a wide scale, he could have been a billionaire definitely man that sucks though but uh yeah guys i really appreciate you stopping in you guys let me know what you think that's that's definitely crazy i've heard the story before but it's it would definitely be interesting to, to know i mean there's actually a book on this as well i'd have to read it as well just to kind of get more it's called uh car mysteries the mysterious death of stanley meyer and his water powered car Written by Stephen Zaloyer. Might be his brother. <laughs> With a pen name. Um, yeah. It's definitely worth a read to track down that book as well. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. It's definitely an interesting story. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know. Shoot me an email, write down in the comments as well. 
social media is down below and everything you guys can hit me up and we can get discussion going maybe create another video as well uh appreciate you guys stopping in everybody stay safe stay blessed out there and most of all stay frosty